Hello, this is um, an additional presentation um, to understand how to make and reproduce IMO or indigenous microorganisms. So what are indigenous microorganisms? They are microorganisms that have been adapting and evolving in the native soil for a very long time before we even came here. So it's all the, it's the diversity and the life that lives in the soil and connects the trees under the soil for them to share nutrients and communicate. So there are mainly, well, there's many and probably many that we don't even know about, but there are fungi, bacteria, and yeasts within these ones. They kind of, some of them look like this in the piece of bark that I'm showing. Um, and the, the important thing here is that the more beneficial biodiversity we have in the soil, the less chance for non-beneficial microbes to reproduce. They also will add a big um, web, like an extension on the roots of trees so that they can be more drought tolerant. And, and we can boost their immune systems and, and resilience to this ecosystem that we are if we harvest them here um, so that our our crops and plants can grow a lot better. So where to harvest indigenous microorganisms? So the best shot would be in nearby forests that you can go into a functional ecosystem close by. Hopefully that you have access to that. The closest, the better. So that um, you can go and find them there. So it's gonna be an expedition for sure. It's gonna be a nice way to connect in the nature. So you want to find something that looks like a mycorrhizal, something that looks uh, something like the picture I showed you in the bark. They, they normally um, appear in leaves like this uh, white webs, barks, um, pieces of wood. Of course it has to be a healthy soil full of mulch that if you remove a little bit of the leaves there you'll find um, kind of like a whitish uh, presence there in the soil, that's the fungi, that's the, that's the mycelium that you're looking for. A uh, quick recommendation is that you shouldn't harvest in the rainy season, you should at least wait for two days with no rain uh, so that you can harvest the IMO. Um, so um, the benefits of IMO, indigenous microorganisms, is that their um, drought tolerance, they have adapted to this place, so they will benefit uh, your plants uh, to be more drought tolerant. This is a picture of how they look like. This is a picture of when we already have reproduced them, but that you can understand how is it that they look like. Um, this kind of white web uh, in the soil. They also boost the immune system, as we said. Um, so these filaments, they add to plant roots. Um, and they, they increase the ability to get more nutrients in the water. So the IMO, there's many steps on how to make IMO. So uh, to start with the IMO one, the first process is that um, you cook some rice. I normally make one kilo of rice, but you can make as much as you want. Um, and that will depend on the size of your natural container. Um, I'll show a picture of that, but you want a natural container like, like a wooden box um, that is not plastic. However, if you're, you're reusing plastic, I guess it's okay as long as it can breathe, that it can have um, some holes underneath that on the sides for the biology to grow. So um, it can be a, a, a canasta also, something that breathes that is uh, made from palm leaves or a natural material is most convenient. So what you're gonna do is the cooked rice, you're gonna put it in your container and then you're gonna cover it with a paper cloth on top. So um, you're gonna take this container full of rice and you're gonna, the full of cooked rice you're gonna go and bury it where you have found that fungi on those branches. So um, if you can, you can dig a small hole and you place your container there. And I would recommend put some of the branches full of that fungi 
on top of the paper cloth, never in there, never in the rice. So what, what's going to happen is that the biology that lives in the soil is going to travel through the paper cloth and through the holes of the box um, and it's going to go and reproduce in the carbohydrate. In this case, it's the rice. So you're going to leave it for five days without getting wet. That's very important. Um, make sure that it's in a dry spot and, and in case that it rains or it's a rainy uh, area, maybe you want to cover it a little bit so that there's no rain on it. So what's going to happen is that the biology is going to, it's going to reproduce in that carbohydrate and it's going to heat up and then you're going to have a big, big colony in that rice. So that would be IMO1 to harvest them. And after five days, it's gonna look something like this, um, where this webby stuff is reproducing. Um, it is important not to add organic matter in the rice. That was my first mistake. And then it was very difficult to get rid of that. You just want the pure rice with the ecology, with the biology. So avoid doing that. Um, adding the leaves and stuff in the rice. The biology will spread in, in any ways in the, in the carbohydrate. So it should smell nice and fresh. Uh, if there's a smelly odor, I would dispose it, I would throw it in your compost, um, but it should smell very nice, very fresh like the forest. Um, and then once you have your rice full of the biology, I would say that you leave just one hour until you start doing IMO too. So you want to, to harvest it when it's full of life and you don't want to take too long uh, because it can heat up way too much and you can lose part of the biology. So within one hour, one hour, we move to IMO two. And basically IMO two is mix the equal amount of that rice full of fungi with brown sugar. That's the only thing you have to do. So the sugar will absorb the available water that is still in the rice and it's gonna make it non-available anymore. So they, that the, the biology go into a dormant state and they release some spores. And this way we can store IMO from the forest for a very long period of time. As you can see, I have many samples that I have taken in different forests that I have found. And it was not necessarily a forest, but it was a, a a very abundant natural site that I found one of them. So to have the most diversity possible. Um, so you just grab that rice that you have with the same uh, weight, the um, amount of black of brown sugar, and then you mix it in one boil. In one bowl, you don't really want to um, to press that hard on the rice. Once you're mixing it, you just kind of want to gently and evenly mix it. So um, you don't want it to be too liquid. In case it's looking very liquid, uh, I would add uh, some of the brown rice on top of that IMO so that you avoid that, that there's a lot more water because if there's a lot of water, then it's gonna react and the bacteria is gonna start eating all that sugar. And it's not really gonna store very well. So um, I wouldn't use that as a primary IMO in case that happens. Just make sure that it's not too liquid, that it's consistent and it's, uh, and it's more solid. So always I, I use a sugar, a brown sugar cap. On once I'm finished uh, mixing the rice with the sugar, just add a little bit of, of brown sugar on top to make sure that there's not gonna be excess of moisture. And this you can store uh, with a breathable lid you can store um, in a place without direct sunlight and it can be good for, for a long period of time. And you should have many of these. And this is the way that you're already relating with the natural biology and implementing it in your soil. It's the best fertilizer. So once you decide you already want to um, take your biology out of the, the dormant state, it's called IMO3, step number three. And I'll briefly go through how to activate and reproduce 10 gallons of, of IMO. So of course you're gonna use your IMO2 and you're gonna have several inputs uh, that are gonna help that reproduction. So 
FPJ is the first one or fermented plant juice. And you use 0.3 ounces for that. You use brown uh, rice vinegar, same amount. Sea water. So if in case you don't have sea water, it would be great to go on a little trip to the ocean. And otherwise, I guess you could order it online, a little bit of, um, of seawater or, you know, just the best way that you can get seawater would be okay. 5.3 ounces. Humic acid in liquid form is best. Um, so um, the IMO2, I, I just use one finger and then water, 1.24 gallons. So what you want to do here is that you want to make a kind of, of a tea. So in the water, you're going to add all your inputs and you're going to mix it gently so that the seawater and the humic acid is going to, is going to enhance the fungi, fungal activity. It's going to give them enough nutrients to reproduce. So um, I'm going to briefly say how to make plant, fermented plant juice. So in this case, I used Moringa because it's produced here locally, organic. So I got a lot of it fresh. So what you want is to harvest your plant uh, and it, it can be a local weed if you want, a weed that you know that has a lot of potassium and magnesium, a lot of nutrients. One that you see that is thriving in the environment that you live in. So what we want is to extract those um, nutrients so we can give them back to our plants, uh, to our um, biology. So I used Moringa and I used brown sugar. And so um, I cut them and I mixed them. I, I cut them very small so that the juices can come out and I added the sugar. I just mix it in, in a bucket with my hands. And once you do that, already there's some moisture coming out. And then what you want is to let it sit for two weeks. Maybe a week is, is, is enough, but just uh, make sure that, um, that it remains liquid, that it's gonna stay liquid so that the fermentation can start. And um, when, when I did this, I had to extract, it, it didn't look very liquid, although it had some liquid, I had to take out the Moringa and just really, really press it with my hand so I could get all the liquid out. And then that's how I started with a breathable lid. So this is briefly how you make FPJ or fermented plant use, juice. You can use um, a plant that you see that is thriving and with the sugar, you're gonna be able to get its nutrients and ferment it so you can give it back to um, our biology. So um, along with the inputs of the IMO3, you need five gallons of carbs and five gallons of carbon. Maybe you can check what is available local, locally for you. What I use uh, in this case is five gallons of wheat bran that is very easy to find here and five gallons of cacao shells. It's a very good smell. I mix them, even, mix them evenly because the wheat is going to cause um, it's a, it's a, a carb and it's gonna make the biology heat up a lot. So I try to stabilize it with the cacao shells that is not only uh, the wheat bran, because if your temperature goes above 120 Fahrenheit, then um, most of the beneficial uh, uh, biology will die because of the heat. So when it's dry, you mix your, your carbs, and your carbs and your carbon, you mix them well, and then you add your liquids, including the IMO2. So once you add the liquids, you really try to mix it thoroughly. Um, and you want to use a natural box for that, because if you use plastic, then um, the, the part of the IMO3 that is against the plastic can become anaerobic. And this is something that happened to me as well. So you really want a breathable box, whether it's um, wood or a cardboard, something like that. So this is when I already mixed my inputs with the carbs and the carbon, and it's, it looks like this. This one smells like chocolate cake. 
So it has to always have a good smell. And so after five days, you have to turn it every day so that it doesn't heat up, that it never goes past 120 Fahrenheit. So mix it every day. I do it with my hands. You can use a shovel. You just really want to move it, you know, to not for it not to become anaerobic. And you know that that you can keep that aeration, uh, stabilization. This is this happened one and on the second day, this photo, and it looks so beautiful. You have to see that much ecology, uh, biology, um, just thriving right there. Um, but yeah, it will look something like this. Um, if you're in a very dry climate, you may need to regulate uh, the moisture. It happened to me that I use cardboard and because cardboard absorbs a lot of water, it dried up in three days. You really want it, um, you want it to be at least five days that it's reproducing so it can really colonize all the, all the grains. So uh, you may add a little bit of water, not too much, just to keep that going for the, in case it's drying up and you feel that the moisture is not correct. The moisture should be, um, you can press it with your hands, but it doesn't really stay like a ball. It just has like a little bit of uh, compression, but it falls apart. That's, that's what you're looking for. In cold climates, it may take a longer time than five days. Just stay vigilant and be open to, to make mistakes and do it again. Just always keep an eye on them. They look something like this. They're very, very beautiful. So in the end, after the five days, it should look something like this. So you get this, um, these chunks of, uh, they will colonize uh, these chunks. And if you open them up, you, you shouldn't open all of them, but if you open them up, they should look something like this, very webby in there. It looks, um, it looks very good. It smells great. Um, and those are um, good biology for our soil, the native biology. And you can store that in a natural, uh, in a wooden box, in a closed wooden box, you can store that for um, some weeks. And from this, you can make, um, you can make cer certain things. You can make liquid IMO, or you can just mix the IMO three, the finished product with your native, um, with your native soil and the same inputs so that you can build soil. And that's how we really build um, native soil again you mix your native soil with the with the biology and then you have that soil full of that um, or microorganisms you know that are going to uh, stabilize and are going to help with the restoration of our soils and to make liquid IMO which is very easy to add um, you just need this amount of um, FPJ same brown rice vinegar seawater, humic acid. IMO2 or IMO3 is okay to use uh, when making liquid IMO and your water. Important that when you're making liquid IMO, since we mainly have fungi, you need an aerator. Something looking like this. Um, I got something like this with at least two tubes giving oxygen. You can use um, your stones. You can add the end of the tube to a stone. You can make that uh, oxygen rock and it goes in the bottom so that you can always have this stimulation for 36 hours and then you have your uh, liquid indigenous microorganisms that you can add to your soil and to your plants. So I hope that was helpful on how to make uh, in, in reproduce indigenous microorganisms that is uh, has been very helpful for us. It, it's super fun to do and that way you make sure that you're working with the available native biology, which is most important. Thank you.